Okay, this is AP Psychology, uh, Chapter 9, Memory, Part 2. And we left off with effortful processing. And effortful processing is committing novel information to memory. It requires effort, just like learning a concept from a textbook, such as processing leads to durable and accessible memories. Um, then you have rehearsal which is effortful learning and usually requires rehearsal or conscious repetition. Ebbinghaus studied the rehearsal by using nonsense syllables, T-U-Y-O-V-G-E-K-X-O-Z. Uh, this, in contrast to this, so what he found was that the more times the nonsense syllables were practiced on day one, the fewer repetitions were required to remember them on day two. Memory effects uh, that he discovered were was the next in line effect. When you are so anxious about being next that you cannot remember what the person just before you in line says, but you can recall what other people around you say. Uh, then there's the spacing effect where we retain information better when we rehearse over time. And then we have the serial position effect where your recall is better for first and last items on a list, but poor for the middle items. Then we have the spacing effect in which distributing rehearsal of the spacing effect is better than practicing all at once. Robert Frost's poem could be memorized with fair ease if we spread over time acquainted with the night. Robert Frost, I've been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in the rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light. The serial position effect has, was like we did with the president assignment was shows you that uh, the, early, the best information is learned as it comes in early, the information learned in the middle, and the information learned at the last are what we learn quick, most quickly. So what we encode is, is encoding by meaning, encoding by images, and encoding by organization. So Automatic processing occurs unconsciously. Effortful processing requires attention and effort. And for example, our memory of new telephone number will disappear unless we work to maintain it in our consciousness. The next in line fact is our tendency to forget what the person ahead of us in line has said because we are focusing on what we say in an, our upcoming turn to speak. The spacing effect is our tendency to retain information more easily. We practice it repeatedly than if we practice it in one long session. The serial position effect is our tendency to remember the last and first items in a long list. For example, a grocery list uh, will remember better than we will the middle items. So we're going to compare the benefits of visual and acoustic and semantic encoding and remembering verbal information and describe memory enhancing strategy related to that self-reference. So when processing verbal information for storage, we usually encode its meaning. For example, we associate it with what we already know or imagine. Research indicates that the semantic encoding of meaning yields better memory of verbal information than acoustic encoding of sound or visual encoding of an image. This research also highlights the futility of trying to remember words we do not understand and benefits of rephrasing what we read and hear into meaningful terms. The self-reference effect suggests that by making information relevant to me, we process it more deeply and the information will remain more easily accessible. So encoding the meaning of whale, did you mean with a capital letter? Uh, do, did the word rhyme with the word weight? That's the phenomenon, uh, the uh, acoustic encoding. And would the uh, word fit in the sentence, he met a in blank in the street? That's semantic encoding. So as we see uh, on the chart here, our semantic type of encoding is typically the best. Uh, acoustic encoding would be next best, and then visual is 
encoding works well. Um, and this is why it's important for you as a student to not only read the book and to pay attention in the class, but to also be looking at what is going on. And this is part of how uh, writing can work out so well. Uh, visual encoding, mental pictures and imagery are powerful aid to effortful processing, especially when combined with semantic encoding. Uh, so in a variety of experiments, researchers documented the benefits of mental imagery. For example, we remember words that lend themselves to picture images better than we remember abstract low imagery words. We remember concrete nouns better than abstract nouns because, for example, we can associate both an image and a meaning with a tiger, but only meaning with process. Imagery is at the heart of many memory aids or mnemonics. For example, in the method of loci mentioned earlier, that speakers remember their main points by associating them with familiar series of locations, such as rooms or objects in the house. Mnemonic imagery is at the heart of many memory aids. Mnemonic techniques use vivid imagery in aiding mem memory. They use the method of loci and the link method. So the method of loci would work where you would have a list of items and then you would have a list of imagined locations where you would put those items. You would then link those items to the uh, what you need to remember and where they are in the room and that would help you identify where you need to what those items are. So organizing information for encoding is a breakdown of complex information into broad concepts that further subdivide, subdivide them into categories and subcategories, uh, chunking and hierarchy. When, when we organize information into meaningful units, we recall it more easily. In chunking, we cluster information into familiar manageable units, such as words into sentences. Chunking occurs so naturally that we often take it for granted. When people develop expertise in the area, they often process information and hierarchies composed of few broad concepts divided and subdivided into lesser concepts and facts. In this way, experts can retrieve information efficiently. Chunking is organizing items into familiar manageable units. So if you try to remember the numbers below and as a long string, it would be difficult to remember. But if you were to break them up into uh, four letter dates, you might be able to remember them by associating those with things from American history. Chunking acronyms are another way of chunking information to remember it. Uh, you can use acronyms uh, such as HOMES, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior for the Great Lakes. Uh, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Or plain old Roy G. Biv, which we've talked about in class before. Hierarchy is a complex information is broken into broad concepts and is further subdivided into categories and subcategories, such as the periodic table and things like that. Uh, encoding is summarized in a hierarchy uh, in this way. Uh, and then finally, we reach the area of storage. Uh, storage is at the heart of memory. Three stores of memory are shown below. We have sensory memory, working memory, and long-term memory. Rajan Madhavan of the University of Tennessee is a psychologist from India who correctly recited the first 31,811 digits of pa 31,811 digits of pi. Rajan's amazing memory for numbers first became apparent when he was five years old. As cars pulled up to his house in Mangalore, India for a party, his parents were having uh, him memorized the license plates. After all the guests had arrived, Rajan recited the license plates of all 40 cars in order in which they had been parked. In one sense, Rajan's memory was not unexpected. His father, a prominent surgeon, all, all 
knows all two two. 2,156 lines of William Shakespeare's 154 sonnets. As a child, reports Rajan, I used to be so lost in my own thoughts, I would like, I would talk to myself, and it was hard to fit in. Other kids didn't know what to make of me. To win and place in the Guinness Book of World Records, Rajan began studying a computer printout of the first 200,000 places of pi, the ratio between the diameter and circumference of a circle. Pi begins with 3.14159 and then continues on indefinitely with no known duplication or pattern, making it the ultimate test of numerical memory. Two Columbia University mathematicians recently calculated Pi to 480 million decimal places. On July 5, 1981, Rajan stood before a capacity crowd in Mangalore meeting hall and rattled off numbers so quickly the judges could hardly keep up. For three hours, 49 minutes, his memory never faltered. Then came a lapse. He forgot, forgot the 31,812th digit of pi, a five. Nonetheless, he toppled the previous record of 20,013 digits. And until 1987, Rajan's performance was the best in the world. In 1987, Hide Hideaki Amiyoro of Japan re recited 40,000 digits in 17 hours, 21 minutes, and, and in 1995, Hirokio Goto recited more than 42,000 in just over nine hours. It is estimated to recite all the known digits of pi, 6.4 billion, would take 133 years with no place pause for coffee or sleep. Some argue that Rajan is still more impressive memory because he recalled the digits at an average rate of 3.5 digits per second, much faster than Tamiyoro or Gatto. Uh, psychologist Charles Thompson who has studied Rajan's memory is convinced that it is superior to Tamiyaro's who made up a story or a mnemonic to remember the numbers. In fact, he believes that Rajan may have the most remarkable numeric memory known to science since S, as noted the text S was S. V. Shavasky, a newspaper reporter whose memory was discovered during the mid-1920s by an editor infuriated by his failure to take notes. S had no need to. He recalled everything he'd ever seen or heard. His inability to forget proved to be much a curse as a blessing, ultimately unable to distinguish between conversations he heard five minutes or five years before. The mnemonist ended up in an asylum. Thompson studied Rajan's memory by flashing numbers on the computer screen one per second and then asking Rajan how he remembers them or by observing his behavior. While Rajan cannot describe the process in which he remembers pi, says Thompson, his response to the numbers on the screen is intriguing. As they appear, he taps his feet and rocks rhythmically back and forth in his chair. From time to time, he jiggles his legs. There's something about the way the numbers sound, he says. For example, he finds the numbers in pi from 2,901st to the 3,000th place, particularly melodic. The series of from the 3,701st to the 3,800th is very jarring. Interestingly enough, Rajan's memory is exceptional only for numbers. In all other areas, names, faces, words, it's considered average. Un unlike S, he forgot, or he can forget, and it is hard, hard to willfully forget numbers.